and welcome to The Pit Stop. I'm your hostess, Manila Luzon, and I can hear the cackling from all the way down the street because guess who's here? Jinx Monsoon. <laughs> Hi, Manila. You know, um, flying in on my broomstick this morning. It was <laughs> the traffic in LA is terrible, even for witches. <laughs> you need to do a little, like, uh, transportation spell. Yeah, a little, like, um, Petrificus Jot Alice! <laughs> Well, last week we saw uh, plastic tiara sachet away. Were you surprised that plastic left this early? Yeah, I really, I mean, I thought if anyone was gonna go to the end, it was the girl who had, you know, plenty of tricks up her sleeve, and then also had the look down, you mm -hmm. know. I, I'm, I'm always a big admirer of queens who can be funny, but who are also gorgeous, seeing as that's something I struggled with for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after the elimination, Miss Vanjie is a little bit confused because she doesn't know where she stands with the judges. On one hand, she feels like they're giving her praise because they love her personality and they're always entertained by Miss Vanjie, but they're also saying that she's not really getting the challenges or she's just being too Vanjie in the challenges. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what she wants. Do you, do you know what she's even talking about? You know, it's like if you have some kind of funny mannerism or some kind of idiosyncrasy that comes naturally to you, it's great to fall back on that, but you don't want that to be something you're doing without making the choice to do it. I feel like the judges are just trying to push yeah. more and more out of her to squeeze something different out of her. When you're in a competition, you can't just rest on one thing because you know every other girl is gonna be reinventing herself every single week. So it's kind of the double-edged sword of going into drag race as an established queen. You wanna stay true to your brand, but you also gotta like, you gotta step up to the competition aspect of it too. And it can't be easy being the DMX of drag, you know. <laughs> Veggie gonna what? Veggie gonna roll? Veggie gonna give it to you? She gonna give it to you? <laughs> Oh, it's tough on the pipes. I don't know how she does that. <laughs> <laughs> we also see Nina West feeling a little hurt that Brooklyn Heights wasn't giving her any props mm -hmm. for allowing her to take the, her winning role in the last challenge. Do you think Nina is being a little bit sensitive about things or should Brooklyn be like, oh, and by the way, I couldn't have done this without Nina West as my partner? I mean, so much can happen to your brain when you're in the middle of competition. You can forget to thank someone, you know, you can take things too seriously. I, I think if I were in Nina's position, I would also feel a little irritated if I gave up the starring role, the role that won, to help a sister out, and then she didn't even say thank you in the end. But also, I don't think Brooklyn hasn't shown us that she's malicious, you know? Yeah. I think we can give Brooklyn the benefit of the doubt, you know, to go from the bottom to the top that rapidly, of course she's going to be a little yeah. in her head about it. Now let's get into the episode. One of my favorite mini challenges so far, <laughs> Balls to the Wall, where the girls have to team up with some of the pit crew to put balls in a sack the fastest. <laughs> I love these challenges, but when it happened to me on my season, I mean, you're, you're in that pink hamster cage, you know, you're in captivity, hormones are running wild, you know, I always felt so shy and nervous, and I'm an ethical slut. You know, like, I'll get down if the opportunity arises, but not on national television. Miss Vanjie is stepping it up because she made it the quickest. Did you feel like she got a little jealous when Brooke was getting all cozy? Oh, yeah, right? Perfect crew guy. They kept cutting to Vanjie, and she's like, mm-mm, you better, you better not. Mm -mm. What? <laughs> Don't look at her. <laughs> So winning this mini challenge, you think it's gonna be good for Vanjie's confidence level? I think the hardest thing for anyone in Vanjie's position to be doing, you know, just so well and falling every once in a while, you know, every week matters more and more for her to like succeed. So I, I think, you know, confidence is good because second guessing herself is what's keeping her from hitting the bullseye. Moving on to the maxi challenge. This week we're gonna have a magic <laughs> show. Witches and goblins and ghouls. Magic. <laughs> The girls need to name their magic act, perform illusions, write and create a whole magic act to perform. It seems like a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. What are your thoughts? I think the hardest thing in any group challenge is to come to a consensus where everyone feels good about what they're gonna do because inevitably there's one big personality that's dictating to the rest of the group what to do. And then there's one outlier who doesn't wanna do anything the rest of the group wants to do. So I, I you know, you gotta just hope that they get 
get along this week, you know? <laughs> yeah, and especially for Vanji, who gets to choose the teams. Then she chooses for her team, Silky, Akira, and Evie, which then leaves Nina, Sugar, and Book and Heights on a team. What do you think of these team pairings? Yeah, I just think there's gonna be a lot of friction there. Whereas I feel with the other team, I think Suga's really good at working with people. Mm -hmm. I think Brooklyn's really good at, you know, focusing on herself while, um, you know, while kind of following someone else's lead. You know, she can follow someone else's lead, but she knows herself so well that she can stay strong, you know, even yeah. if someone else is taking charge. And then I think this is just a challenge right up Nina's alley. Were you as surprised as Mama Ru when we found out that Vanjie didn't pick Brooklyn Heights? I feel like if I had a romance going on, I'd be really self-conscious about everyone thinking that every move that I make is about that other person. So I probably wouldn't have picked my my boo either because Ivy I wouldn't have <laughs> I would <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted everyone to assume I was just doing it because we were, you know. Hubba, hubba. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, because you know, the showmances are always the ones who are like, we gotta break them up. Yeah, you make yourself a target. Okay, so let's look into these magic performances. First up, we had Brooklyn, Sugar, and Nina. The Mighty Tux, how do you think they did? First of all, right away, I love that Nina was like, so Michelle calls me a linebacker, so they think I need to get my proportions right. She wore her football pads <laughs> to Vegas, and it really freaking worked because, I don't know, there's something just really captivating about Nina, even if, you know, the hair's pulled back to here and she's got her football pads on and and she's like, you know, bookended by these two gorgeous, slutty little like magician's assistants. It's that she is having so much fun and she is so joyful about it that she could be wearing, I don't know, a grimace costume. She could be she could be dressed like a basketball and I would still just love every moment of it. <laughs> so you think they did good? <laughs> I did. I thought they did really well. I was, you know, I was pleasantly um, surprised with Brooklyn's because I think beauty queens have a hard time letting go of you know, controlling their image and w the way people view them. So I'm always happy to see a beauty queen look stunning, but then also like commit to the camp factor. And then I thought Sugar was great. I thought they were just cohesive. They looked like they had every moment planned out. They looked like they rehearsed a lot. And you know, rehearsal is very important in these things. You know, you only have so much time on stage and you're competing against another team. So if you don't make sure your is solid, then you're kind of just like, you're leaving it to the hands of the gods. I think Sugar did a great job, and I like her outfit. The whole team was great. I wish the whole team, you know, just won this week. I wish all three of them could share the prize. Next up, we have Vanjie, Akira, Evie, and Silky. The Black Magic. What did you think of their performance? <laughs> you know what? I gotta say right now, improv could be easy when you're alone. I think every queen thinks because she can stand alone on stage with a microphone in her hand and improv with the audience, that that means she's an improv superstar. All of them could have done this alone, but when you put them in a group together, there you have the double-edged sword of four big personalities being in one group. Yeah, and because they were all big personalities, none of them were actually listening to each other. When they were planning this, Evie's saying like, oh, I want this rehearsed. Vanjie's like, okay, well, I'm team leader, but you know, Silky and Akira are like, oh no, we want to just do this more improv on the spot because that's what we're more comfortable with. And Vanjie's like, okay, well, I see both sides. I'm yeah. the team leader. Let's kind of find a middle ground. Well, and then in that early stage, if you can't all come to a consensus as a group early on, then by the time you're on stage, you're you're screwed because it's a group effort. Overall, who do you think did the best in this challenge? Nina, Nina West by far. And then a close second for me was Brooklyn. A very close second. You know, I thought they both just were, they embodied what I wanted to see from a drag queen magic show, you know? Well, who are your bottoms in this challenge? Evie and Vanjie. And it's hard to say that because I love them both and have loved them both on this whole season. But for me, it all comes down to that moment where Evie goes, she's got the bra and she's like, and now she has an over the shoulder boulder holder and she can bounce. <laughs> 
<laughs> no one's saying anything. No reaction from the audience. The judges panel, stone cold silent, while we all just watch Evie stand there with the Brago. Vanjie's downfall could be encapsulated with one move. <laughs> you could really see like Vanjie like really desperately trying to make this work <laughs> when she just desperately knew like in all reality oh this is not really working <laughs> the magic continues because now it's time for the runway <sighs> kaftan realness my favorite looks were brooklyn heights and evie oddly now brooklyn is a bit of a body yaddy yaddy queen mm -hmm. and i am not a body yaddy yaddy queen but i know when i like something when I look at it and I'm like, God, I wish I thought of that first, you know? <laughs> when I look at an outfit and wish I had had it designed for me so that that queen couldn't wear it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then Evie's, I would never wear it yellow myself because I'm so pale. It, Who would you know, ever would wear yellow? Turn me yellow. <laughs> but um, I, I really liked Evie's look too because it looked like fashion forward, current, bohemian, you know, it just, and it looked like her personality. I also thought um, the most on the nose, for the money, bullseye, caftan look was Nina West. Yeah. You know, cause if you want, if you Google caftan, from now on, you're gonna see Nina West in that big pink. She was giving you very, like she was giving you Lady Bunny with the giant blonde hair and the pink sparkly caftan. It would, I mean like, what a what a great runway for Nina. My favorite was Sugar's, until she took it off. Mm -hmm. Sugar, and that robe was beautiful, the fur line, the detail, but then she, took it off and ruined the whole thing for me. It was one of those moments like in a lip sync when you see the girl's hand go for her wig line and you know she's gonna throw off the wig. It was like when I saw her reach for this, I was like, okay, what's, what's gonna happen? Hair? And then she was like, and I don't wanna win. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. I was so excited when she came out and I was like, I love this look. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I don't like that look. Oh, oh, it just kept getting progressively worse. I was very disappointed um, with Akira's butterfly look because it looked more like, you know, like a skydiving suit than a, <laughs> than a caftan. Yeah, Akira needed to, like, I feel like she had that in her closet and she was like, this will work for this because I've seen caftans with pants. But no, caftans are supposed to be loose and billowy and I think that she totally missed the mark on that. The rule is, do you have to tuck? If the answer is no, then you're in caftan town. <laughs> I'm not tucked right now, and I'm wearing a caftan. <laughs> well, it's time for the judges, and they choose Nina as the winner. Do you agree with them? Absolutely well deserved. You know, I thought Nina, um, I thought Nina had it in the bag with Snatch Game. I always, you know, I always defer to the judges. They're there for a reason, but I feel like this week, it was Nina's redemption because she could have taken she could have taken it snatch game week, but it's kind of more important that she took it now because as the numbers dwindle, everyone's looking for someone to chop. And I'm glad it wasn't Nina this week because I, she did really well. I'm very proud of Nina. I think she did a phenomenal job. We got an amazing magic show from her. Mm -hmm. And then she really hit the nail on the head with her caftan look. Yeah. Well, that leaves Miss Vanjie and Sugar in the bottom. Do you agree mm -hmm. with the judges? I think it should have been Vanjie and Evie, quite honestly. Uh, oh, like mainly because I think the team that did better should have been safe. I completely disagree with the judges. I don't, I thought that Sugar was doing super well its entire challenge. I still think that because she was in that group, that group would, did the yeah, best. I think they, I think it should have come down to the the two weakest in the other group. At this point, there isn't like a clear like winner and there's definitely not a person you're like, okay, she's got to go. Any little thing can tip the scale and you oh, could be in the bottom. It's, it's the nerve wracking part of doing well. You know, the better and better you do, the farther you get, the harder the competition is gonna be for you. So now it's time for the bottom two to lip sync for their lives to save themselves from elimination. What did you think of this lip sync? I thought it was grade A drag lip sync. You know, it was like, it was a perfect song for the two of them. 
And from the moment the music started, both of the, it was like snapped into it. They were just doing drag. Like there's the only way to put it. Like they were just doing a good old Sunday brunch drag number for tips. Yes. <laughs> Vanjie did a fantastic job. I, because the song is, it swells with feeling and the musicality, I think she started a good level and then she was able to crescendo her performance. I think Benji did a great job. I have watched this season and I've watched the lip syncs and I think to myself, if I had to lip sync against these girls, I'd be out. Well, Miss Vanji does it again and saves herself from elimination, which sadly means sugar it has to sashay away. Do you yeah. agree with that? I mean, I think given the circumstances, you want to see who delivers in that moment and let them stay. That's the point of a lip sync for your life. Well, that's another episode of The Pit Stop. I want to thank Jinx Monsoon. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, you guys. Oh, should we Le get out of here? Yeah, let's get yeah. out of here. <laughs> hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.